Hi, today is July 19th, 2023, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 1164 for the year, James Graham and the National Covenant. I feel like a student who didn't get the assignment done in time, but after going through the photos that I took in Edinburgh, I didn't see anything that I feel like writing about. The photo that I took that is most rich with history is the one that partially shows a monument to James Graham and that partially shows a copy of the National Covenant. There was a tour guide and some tourists in the way, else I would have gotten a better photo. The tour guide was explaining who James Graham was and what the National Covenant was, but I wasn't listening. I had a long train ride to London yesterday, and I certainly could have read up on James Graham and the National Covenant and the War of the Three Kingdoms, which sounds like some interesting Game of Thrones kind of shit. And this all revolved around the struggle of the Presbyterians in Scotland in the 1600s, and I am interested in it, and I really did want to write a poem about it, but the dog ate my homework is what happened. The dog ate my homework, and I have no gift to bring. Parumpa pum pum Poem number 1165, Last Night in London. Last night, the daughter and I met a couple of the Priscillas, Jen and Yola, for dinner. We had a, one hell of a time finding a place. The first place I wanted to go to was closed until Friday. No help there. The second place took our reservation and then did not honor it, leading Jen to quote that line from Seinfeld, you know how to keep the reservation, you just don't know how to hold the reservation. Funny stuff, except when it happens to you. So we walked along a street that was jam-packed with proprietors who offered us great deals to come into their restaurant. Free drinks, 20% off, no service charge. It seemed a little sketchy to us all. I joked that if we kept going, one of the places might pay us to eat there. Clearly, I am no Seinfeld. Then one of the representatives for one of the restaurants promised that we would get no discounts of any kind. That sounded okay to us. The prices were low, the food was good, and we ate well. Last night in London wasn't our last night in London. Tonight is our last night in London. It's been a good trip, and it will be good to get back. Poem number 1166, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's four o'clock in the morning, damn it, back in New York. Almost everyone I know in New York is sleeping right now, or maybe everyone. I don't know what everyone I know does. I don't know what a lot of people I know do, but I reckon a lot of the people I know in New York are sleeping. As well they should. It's four o'clock in the morning, damn it, and I'm sleeping with myself tonight, and by the time I fall asleep, most of the people I know in New York will be out and about. Starting tomorrow, I will have to get back on schedule and go to sleep and wake up at a normal time. This is one of the things about traveling. One has to make adjustments. I've adjusted, and I will adjust. And I don't need anyone to save my life. And I don't know if my poetry is still alive, or if it ever was, or even if it's poetry. But it keeps going, and it keeps me going, and saves my life, damn it. Poem number 1167, Broadened. They say travel is broadening, but I don't know if I have been broadened. My eating schedule has changed significantly, and as a result, I believe my belly has broadened. But as for me, I feel more or less the same. I think my daughter may have been broadened. It's easier to be broadened when you are a teenager, or at least it was easier for me to be broadened when I was a teenager. When I first went overseas, I was more than five years older than my daughter is now. I found it broadening, but I found myself attracted to the mundane, the quotidian. I became well-versed in the various fast food chains of the countries I visited. Hitburger, Fibo, Wimpy, a poem I wrote about fast food in Europe, is the only one I remember writing about that first visit. So maybe I wasn't all that broadened after all. Is this seeming inability to be broadened an American thing? At least this time I have written more about being here. This will help me remember things. Perhaps that will be broadening. Perhaps I have been more broadened than I realize. Or perhaps not. And the last poem of the day is poem number 1168, and it's called Waitrose. Instead of exploring European fast food, as I did back in the 80s, on this trip I explored supermarkets. Tesco Express, Waitrose and Partner, and yesterday, Sainsbury's. Waitrose and Partners was by far the most posh. 
I visited one in Glasgow with Tracy, who taught me how to pronounce Waitrose and how to use the scanner. You have a scanner, and you scan the items, and it keeps a running total, and then at the end, you scan your scanner, and then you pay. Fucking brilliant. So fast and easy. Waitrose was by far my favorite of the supermarkets. I believe I will miss Waitrose a lot. And Tracy, and Jen, and Yola, and Taylor, and Val, and all the, and the other lovely people that I have met on this trip. I don't mean to suggest I will miss Waitrose more than the lovely people. I will miss the people more, but I will miss Waitrose as well. All right, that's it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you.